All right, so new day, getting stuff done. I uh, got the right parts in, the right uh, spray bar bushing pieces in, and got a little bit of paint on the bar, and uh, yeah, we're going to get started on it, maybe get working on the uh, master cylinder today because damn thing needs a master cylinder, and I've just it's been hot. I don't feel like going out, and I got three other vehicles to drive around, so when one goes down, it usually isn't a, a you know, it's not an immediate concern anymore these days. Um... So yeah, let's get looking at the pieces. Okay, so these are the new bushings that came in. Um, 33 millimeter, I think it works out to be inch and five sixteenths. I've been thinking about it and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna go ahead and use these plates because that's just a, a good bit of standoff distance, you know, comparatively there. Putting these guys Sorry, it's a bit dark. Let's move over to the light. Putting these guys up like that, you know, it's a good bit of standoff distance. I am probably going to have to figure something out, though, because as you can see, uh, that, too, is a good bit of distance. Um, but, you know, that's something that can be overcome with, like, just uh, as bad as it is, just stacking washers. Uh, I mean, that's it's a horrible thing to do, but... You know, you just need a little bit of a spacer in there to keep things from deforming and and just being in the right place. But that's going to be the first thing is testing to make sure that the bracket on those bushings fits properly and I don't have to modify the bracket any. I'm going to go ahead and use those pieces as well just because the rear standoff, that's that's pretty healthy rear standoff. Uh, let's see here. we got two coats of black paint on the bar. So the bar looks all nice and, you know... It's restored, it's brand new now, right? Um, a lot of guys, from what I was reading online, they put side-to-side uh, -side limiters on them. Uh, some guys were talking about just wrap a piece of rubber around and put a, uh, put a hose clamp on it. Other guys actually use clamping collars. And I thought about it. I mean, I, I know why they do it. And I've done it on like race cars and, and other things before. Never really in stock application. Um, I'm assuming they do it because these have, you know, well, I guess in everything pretty much these days, you got the ball socket um, in links, they're double ball socket. So you do get more deflection and uh, movement out of those than you do with like rigid in links or more. Um, I guess rigid in length isn't right because they all provide some amount of flex, but a, the ball end ones tend to move more. That's all. Um, but if I'm going to do that, I really want either aluminum clamping rings or stainless steel clamping rings. And those are just too expensive right now. So I'm going to give it a go with what it is and uh, keep an eye on it. And if it looks like it needs something, then we will add something at a later point. It's not like it's difficult to you know, kind of shimmy a bar around even when it's mounted to a vehicle because you, you're not going to be, these, this thing's not going to deflect more than, shit, maybe a quarter inch one way or the other. You can push that back into place with your foot and then put some limiting clamps on there. Uh, what else we got? Looks like my tractor sprung a leak, at least a small one. Uh, but it's working, so I'll get to that too. Okay, so let's put the camera down. Let's get to work. Uh, looks like I gotta open the garage still. And we'll start the day. Okay, so we're back under, or I guess we're just under. I don't know, however you wanna look at it. Uh, I didn't show what I did, but I took a carbide deburr uh, and a die grinder, and I kinda, yep, oh, shit. And I kinda keyholed the end, so it's a little bit bigger around. And a little bit further to the outside edges. Uh, these are set up for 3 8 hardware. Uh, this is 12 mil. So it needs to be opened up just a touch. And they're, they need to be slotted opposed a little bit more. Sorry, I keep getting my hand in the light. I'm not used to, not used to the light. I uh, put some of the polyurethane grease on the inside and the outside of the bushing. Because I bought a kit years ago for a 350z and it came with enough of that stuff to do like seven cars so just put it on i'll touch it up with some uh pump grease 
when I'm done. All the paint I put on after I got done, you know, messing with the metal has rubbed off because I didn't get enough time to harden. And, uh, you know, I snugged everything down with a ratchet and then just kind of zipped it a couple of ugga duggas with an impact. I got my Moog greasable end links. I, there's a lot of school of thought on that. I like greasable parts for the chassis when you can get them. Uh, I feel like, in my personal experience, the components have lasted longer. So, always opt for the greasable if available. Now, like I said, I did have to space these off. Um, I don't know if the camera can really pick it up or not. That is two 12 millimeter washers. Um, these are Lawson washers, if it matters. Or at least that's who I bought them from was Lawson. And uh, so your your mileage may vary if you try to do this and uh, and your washers are a different thickness than mine. Uh, I want to say though that it's about it's about three sixteenths of an inch, uh, g give or take a bit, um, but it's about three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, I'll go through and check the torque on these. There's twelve millimeter studs, so I'm just going to look up basic twelve millimeter. But, yeah, this side's in. Got to tighten up those. Put a couple pumps of grease and then throw it all back together. And, like I said, I'll just keep an eye on it and see if I need some kind of limiting collar to keep it from moving around back and forth or something like that. Uh, but, yep, that's where we're at. 33 millimeter uh, energy suspension polyurethane bushings. I think they, for SAE, I think it comes out to be inch and five sixteenths. Um, or at least that's reasonably close, but that got everything in place. I did use those back pieces just because that is a thick standoff from the subframe. And I felt like that was, that was important to have that standoff from the subframe. It may not be, but uh, I personally felt it was, and it didn't, you know, it didn't go, make me go out of my way or anything like that. So let me finish buttoning this up and we'll come back to it in a minute. And we're back under here. Uh, those of you with a keen eye probably already typed away the ones of you anyway I had put the bar in upside down because I'm a moron and that's just what we do um, But it's fixed. It's in right. Everything's torqued. Everything's greased. It's nice Doesn't look like it's you know falling out of the truck um, I was not happy with the ugh, So many hoses with the differential vent was it just kind of came out and up it didn't even clear the bottom of the oil pan so a little bit of 5 16 hose ran it up it's nothing nothing pretty but it's just up there just under the upper radiator hose which i mean this isn't an off-road monster or anything i'm not i'm not planning on four wheeling it a whole lot but it does see some uh four wheel drive use especially around the property getting different places on the light trails and stuff and i just really don't like having uh vents that low to the ground it's it's just bad form i'm sorry it doesn't doesn't take a whole lot to just run a cheap piece of hose up there and, and do it especially when they've already paid to have a molded 90 made uh let's see and the other thing i found here with no light and everybody's upside down at the best camera angles in the universe because i am a good cameraman um Maybe like that? Does that look? Maybe maybe over here? I'm sorry. The card's on jack stands, and I'm trying to roll around in a creeper, and I got stuck, and I'm in an awkward spot. But looks like the lower oil pan uh, is starting to leak. Judging by the amount of RTV, I mean, I get a lot of, a lot of the times this stuff is all RTV'd at the factory, but it's generally a little nicer than that. Let's see. Yeah, you can see all the, see all the oil dripping there. Uh, so that's got to be addressed. That'll be fun. I did want to upgrade the, uh, the oil cooler, oil filter housing on this because it is still the original plastic one. And so far it has not kablooied on me. Uh, so maybe I'll do both of those at the same time. But as this stands, I think, uh, sway bar bushings are done. I'm going to throw the splash shield back on. And then I guess it's time to work on the uh, master cylinder, which looks like it's going to be even more fun than this was. So, moral of the story. So, sway bar horns go down, not, or, 
or come down and up and not come up and down. Don't be a moron. Do it right. Uh, but yeah, everything's coming along. Not bad for like 120K. You know, it's pretty clean. Not a lot of leaks or breaks or anything like that. So yeah, let me get this buttoned up. And this will probably be the end of this video. In the next video, we'll do the master cylinder.